Hi, I'm over in the workshop again. I was doing some work on my sander here, well, doing, making some things with it, and uh, it occurred to me, most people that have these 12 inch disc sanders, they use them for wood. Um, on mine I've got a, uh, an aluminum oxide disc, and I use it mostly for metal, although you can use it for wood too, it's 80 grit. Um, so I was just making some uh, new arbors for wheels, you know, like, you know, for like wire wheels and stuff. Just wanted to have a few extra pounds. So I bought five inch, there we go, five inch, half inch diameter bolts. Okay? So, when you crank on a nut, if you look closely, you'll see it only goes on so far. I don't know if we can focus in on that. So what I do is I drill out two-thirds of the threads on a nut. Then when you crank it on your arbor, it goes on that much further. So, I mean, it's just a little more, but that makes a big difference. Especially if you're putting on a, a wheel on here that's a half inch thick. You know, so you can put uh, a couple flat washers. And a nut. And you're good to go. So I made three of these. After I cut the, uh, the heads off, then I just sanded them on the sander. This one, uh, this disc has been on here a year. Uh, they hold up really well. I use it uh, for a lot of metal things. See, I uh, ground these things down. Um, yeah, I use it mostly for metal. And then over on this side, if you uh, you know if you want to use a little tiny grinding wheels or this flap sanding disc, uh, you got that too. So yeah, I just wanted to show you that. Yeah, this is just one more thing I wanted to just discuss. I don't know, you can probably see it right here. You can see this white line in between the grinding disc and the aluminum disc. All right, it goes to there. There's a, say I put a Sharpie mark there. The Sharpie mark on the disc. Sharpie mark on the disc. And there's the other end. It's probably a little hard to see. But anyway, what you do is you put your put your finger up against the disc like that and you turn it and you watch the disc and if it goes in and out where it goes in you make a mark where it starts to come back out again you make another mark okay then between those two spots I dropped in a piece of 100 grit sandpaper okay that sort of shims out the disc now that's kind of that's permanent it's never going to change just because of the, the uh, run in and out the uh, of the grinding disc you know, it wobbles just a slight bit. So um, after you put the sandpaper in there, you just take a rock knife, sheet rock knife, and just cut it along there and peel it off. Now that's that's going to stay in there in that position every time you uh, you take this apart to replace the sandpaper. So of course you you pull the bolt, take the table off, unscrew the nut on the disc, take it off, replace your sandpaper disc, you put it back on, and you put this. Uh, Put this piece of sandpaper right back in the same place, and the wheel will spin true every time. So, um, yeah, just wanted to show you that. I, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier on, but uh, there you go. Okay, I'm out of my garage. That's my workbench over there. This is a two-car garage. In the wintertime, you have to keep the cars in here, so I built a workbench that can fold down. It takes an inch and a half of space up on the wall, but this is how it works. Keep out here hanging on the wall. All right, 
this is the uh, this is the one I built 25 years ago. You see, it's two speeds. You've got two pulleys. Um, there's a handle for moving the motor forward and back. It's got the same 12-inch disc. Uh, this one's got an extra grinding wheel. Five-eighths inch chuck. Of course, that has a bigger shaft and stuff because of that. But that's what I got a hold of at the time. Um, 